and welcome back to my channel. Unless you are new here, and just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal. And t tonight, yes, tonight. This time, we are going to be talking about um, a couple of movies that I got a hold of that I I looked for them for months because I really wanted them. Now, if you haven't seen my video, I am a super fanboy of The Haunting of Sharon Tate. A lot of people don't like it. I absolutely love it. But then again, I call the you know, Nail Gun Massacre a masterpiece as well. But I absolutely love The Haunting of Sharon Tate. And um, this guy did two more movies similar in nature taking real life and adding fictionalized twists to it in some way. And this one is Ted Bundy, American Psycho. Now, originally released in the U.S., um, in the U.S., it's domestically, its title was Ted Bundy, American Boogeyman. But I guess they changed it to Psycho because maybe internationally they don't know what a boogeyman is. Or it means something else over there. I don't know. I never heard the word boogeyman in England. I don't know. And in, in any event, it's Ted Bundy, American Psycho. Now, like I said, I've got the slipcase. This is made by the same guy who did Haunting of Sharon Tate. It stars Chad Michael Murray, Holland Roden, Jake Hayes, and Miss Lynn Shea. Is it, Liz Shea is in it as well as his mom. So she's in there. She plays his mother. Like I said, these aren't documentaries. They're legit, you know, films. They're just, they take the truth and then they kind of fictionalize some parts of it and give it a twist. So, um, we see the film opens with these two girls talking in a bar about how shitty men are. And it's Utah, 1974. One of them steps outside for a cigarette and she sees a man on crutches trying to get into a VW bug. Now, if you know the Ted Bundy story, we know who that is. So, she helps him, and um, he keeps dropping his keys, and his keys get on the car. Well, I just knew that bitch was going to get taken, right? But it was a nice little jump scare. I like the way that was filmed, because her boyfriend, like, pulls up really quick, like, what the fuck are you doing? Get in the goddamn car. We got someplace to go. And I'm like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I thought she was supposed to be a victim. Right. So, right before he strikes, that's when her little hot rod boyfriend pulls up and saves her. Um, Jill, however, she gets in the car and leaves. However, m you know, um, Melissa, that other girl in the store, uh, the bar, she comes out, of course, looking for her. Can't find her and ends up going down the same alley to where you know, Ted Bundy was, and he gets her, bashes her, takes her out into the woods, rapes and murders her, and then he proceeds to behead her. So, yeah, it, 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 it follows the story, but yeah, so that was pretty graphic, and it was pretty, you know, fucked up. So... We are then, she's raped and murdered, yeah. We are then introduced to the cops who are on, I guess, the task force looking for him. There is a task force a brief, a briefing and victim rundowns about all these women who are disappearing. An analysis of the suspect. They know now that his name is Ted. Um, we're introduced, of course, to Kathleen. She's the leader of this task force. Um, and... We are introduced then to Special Agent, Agent Robert Ressler. These are real people uh, in real life um, who is a profile. These are the real people who worked on the case. So we're introduced to people playing them. Um, he comes to help the task force. Uh, we see how Ted keeps moving around. He's hunting in Salt Lake and, uh, you know, stuff like that and keeping them off guard. Uh we, she ends up going to D.C. with, with Wrestler, 
to the profiling department because you know back then profiling was just becoming a thing so he introduces her to that kind of police work where we see you know all of these victims and they're trying to find him uh we see ted take well of course seeing victims getting taken in various ways by ted during this movie so we get to see the one where he uses the cop ruse this really did happen where he uh, got one of them in the car, Carol, by pretending to be a cop, showing her a badge, a fake one, of course, and getting her to, uh, quote, come down to the station because someone had tried to break into her car, and he, she needed to write a report. Now, on the way, she gets spooked, realized this can't be real, and he tries to get her, but because it's, I mean, he was brazen, right? So, it's in the middle of the day, and she starts freaking out. She manages to get him to almost wreck. She gets out of the car, even though he's bashed her in the head, like with a tire iron. She gets out, gets out of the car, gets into a van, and gets saved. And that's real. That that really did happen. So, we get to see that, you know, played out. Um... She gets away, and he starts freaking out. We see Kathleen and, and Wrestler in Seattle. They're back in Seattle. Getting to know each other, we learn about their careers, what got them into all of this. We see news reports of four more women, uh, bodies who are found in the mountain, and a suspect named Dan, uh, Ted. Uh, we get to see Ted disposing of yet another body. More news reports. Um... They go to the medical examiner, um, so we get to hear what they learn from him. She explains why she got into this. She had an older sister who had uh, went hitchhiking when she was 16 to find herself. I have to remember, this is the mid-70s, and she had gotten taken, kidnapped, and murdered. So that's why she does what she does uh, she had been raped, drugged, and beaten, and died in the coma before she could ever come out of it. <coughs> um, they do manage to find Ted in Utah in 1975. Um, he was out hunting. He got stopped by the cops and was put in jail. Carol comes and identifies him as the guy who tried to kidnap her. Ted is questioned by a psychiatrist who later tells Kathleen and wrestler that he believes this is the most dangerous individual he had ever talked to in his entire life and um two years later we're at two years later on december the 3rd of 1977 ted escapes he escapes from prison and wrestler ends up calling Catherine. they discuss the case and how scared they are now and now we're down here in Tallahassee, which is right over there. I only live an hour from the capital of Florida. It's just right over there. So he's down here in Tallahassee, January the 10th, 78. Um, he, takes a, he tries to get his first Florida victim, but two joggers come by while he's trying to strangle her in a car, and she manages to get away. He then shows up and rents a room at the after he finds the Chi Omega dorm. Um, he rents a room near there. Now, we also see Mrs. Bundy, that's Liz Shea. We see her being interviewed and talked to by Kathleen and Wrestler about, you know, your son has escaped, you know. Well, she still believes he never did anything wrong and that it was all a frame-up anyway. Um, but she tells the story, the true story, about how, you know, she was forced to be raised as his sister. You know, she got pregnant when she was, whatever, 14, 15, 16, whatever. And, you know, the grandparents were going to make her send her to one of those birthing places that they sent naughty little girls um, who got pregnant. Um, but she begged them so much that they were like, okay, fine, you can keep the baby, but, and this is true, you have to let us adopt him as our 
child and he's your sister. You know, you're his sister. So Ted Bundy was actually raised by his grandparents, thinking his grandparents were his family, his mother and father, when actually his sister was his mother. So there you go. So like I said, they keep most everything true. They're just dramatizing a lot of it. So he then moves in to, he rents a room next to the Chi Omega dorm. And uh, after they had interviewed um, his mom, telling the story of the upbringing and the life and stuff like that, he introduces himself as Chris Hagen and rents a room next to the Chi Omega um, as pretending to be a transfer graduate student. Um, what's her name? Cheryl? Is that her name? So, no, Dottie. That's who it was. I was trying to think of the character's name. Whoever it is that plays Dottie in this movie, that's the woman that rents the room to him. She was fucking fantastic. I mean, I laughed my ass off at her accent. Not because it was wrong, but because it was identical. I mean, it was perfect. Her accent is from this area. It was just done perfectly. So she was a really cool character. He, of course, then begins to watch and spy on the Kai girls all the time, especially one named Cheryl. Um, he's beginning to have kill withdrawal. You know what I'm saying? And there is a psychotronic masturbation scene of the Hellraiser kind. That's what I put in it. Because that scene was so freaky. You know. And you can tell he's having like murder withdrawal. And. I mean don't you wonder sometimes. These psycho crazy people. Don't you wonder what they. Whack off to or something. I mean. It's kind of gross to think about. But if you're into true crime. You know but. Seeing him. And this Chad Michael Murphy, he did a, 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 a Murray, he did a really great job at playing Ted. But this masturbation scene, with all of the visuals and stuff demonstrating what he was thinking about to get off, it was quite disturbing. <laughs> it was it was quite disturbing. The director did really good, <laughs> you know, with that scene. Um, so. Kathleen, back at the Seattle, Kathleen has found out that the locals have dropped the case, that the feds have taken over. She refuses, though. She's pissed off. And Wrestler, he calls her, though, from Tallahassee and tells her about a child abduction um, that he believes is Ted. And this was true as well. It was that little girl that he killed. They didn't go into yeah, Now The director wasn't going to touch that. So they didn't really go into that part at all, as far as dramatizing it for the screen. Um, but she's disappeared, and um, she was seen leaving in a VW bug with a dark-haired man. So Cheryl becomes is becoming suspicious of this Chad guy, or this Craig guy, or whatever he's calling himself. And she ends up like finding him not in his room and she looks and she finds those bondage magazines and stuff like that. She gets caught by him, but she manages to worm her way out of it. And Kathleen and Wrestler have now come down to Tallahassee. They warn the sheriff about Ted, who is this person, that he's loose in their area. And um, they put out an ABB for him and stuff like that, but it's too late. Because the Chi Omega bloodbath takes place that night. Um, and that was some pretty graphic, you know, the haunting of Sharon Tate, the, the, the murder scenes were, were just some of the worst that I've ever seen in a horror movie. I mean, they were like brutal. And this Chi Omega attack where he killed two of the girls, that it was, it was filmed. The carnage was real, is what I can say. Um... So that takes place. Kathleen comes on, though, and sees the VW bug outside and goes in. So she's there for the tail end of that attack. 
but he gets away and um she goes in and tries to stop the carnage but you know she even takes a few shots at ted who does who gets away um i'm not sure if that really happened though that's part of the dramatization i think but some victims survived two of them were killed i think what two others three others one two three four i think there were six there there were five or six but two of them were murdered and it was the carnage was like i said it was very intense um the scene where he gets away that next day where he walks by Dottie and he's still like covered in blood because you know he's got this mythos about him that he's invisible that he gets away with all of this and has for all of these years because he is protected by this entity and he's invisible that plays into the movie a bit probably some of the shit that he said in interviews so um she stares at you know he stares Dottie in the eyes even though there's cops all over the place out there he just walks away and she doesn't say anything but I guess she really doesn't know anything you know but then we see the postscript you know after he's walking away we see the postscript that he was called in February the 15th 1978 in Pensacola Tallahassee is right there Pensacola is right there <laughs> so I'm close to both of these towns so he received the death penalty and was electrocuted on January the 24th, 1989. Um, they do show his execution scene. They estimate that his kills were 100 plus, even though he was like only known for like 52. Um, Kathleen and Ressler were there to witness it. We see them again visit louise his mom in 1989 after the execution uh, which was a pretty haunting scene um the reason they went to see her is because they were going to release his confession tapes and they wanted her to hear it before the public got a hold of it so she listens to it and then has this really weird reaction where you know she just starts singing a song and asking them a hymn, a gospel hymn. She starts like singing this gospel hymn and um, asks them if they want tea and cookies and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, she's fried her mentally. Um, then the movie ends with real front footage of these characters, you know, Kathleen and Wrestler, telling about their career and what you know how it went on and then also bios of the victims and um of him and her and yeah that's the way the movie ends and it was great did it. what did i give it i gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, i wasn't as thrilled with it as i was thrilled with haunting of sharon tape and then that's a whole different issue it's a whole different scenario um, the Haunting of Sharon Tate is a fantasy alternative version along with the real incident. This one didn't have that, so it was pretty much more of a straightforward dramatization, but it was a very, very good one. You know, I really enjoyed it, and some of the kill scenes were really, really horrible. And they, he kept it to the good, you know, to the truth. But then he also dramatized. But what he did dramatize was stuff that Ted Bundy would have done. And that's what he also did in the second one that we're going to do. So yes, that's Ted Bundy, American Psycho. I really, really liked this movie. I'm glad that I took, it took me a couple of months to like find a place to get this. So I got it. And yes, I'll see you. In its companion film, which I loved, I loved even more than this one. And um, yeah, love you, miss you, bye. Always remember and never forget, you're a very special person, and DNA proves it. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. And I will see you with Miss Eileen Warnos coming up next. Bye bye.